Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Today I want to show you how to calibrate the cursor hair on your domino joiner. Now the cursor hair is this little plastic piece here that's on the fence. It's actually a user calibrated part, as unlike many of the other parts that are already done for you at the factory. So I want to show you how to do that because oftentimes you get the joiner and you're all excited, so you run to the shop and you start using it, and you know, then months later you're wondering why some of your joints that should be flush are just a little less than flush. Wouldn't be that bad, but could be close, right? So I want to show you how to do the calibration. It's super easy, super fast, and once you've done, done it, it'll last you for years. I've done this on my old fence. I did this one, uh, I don't know, when I first got the domino, maybe two or three years ago, and I've yet to ever have to adjust it, and it's been just dead on every time I test it, so I'm not undoing it. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this calibration today is because I contacted Festool USA, and I asked them if they had a demo version of the paddle fence. Now, this is the paddle fence that you get on the newer dominoes. Mine is you know, the original model that had the pin style fence. Now the reason I wanted this is I'm not becoming a convert from pin style. I still love that for a lot of reasons, especially those narrow stock spacers you see me use. Although with the SCG10 there's a lot less need for those stock spacers. So I wanted to have a fence that I can show you operations both on the newer model and on the older model in case there's a difference. So thanks Festool USA for the fence. So the procedure is pretty fast so let's just get right to it. For calibrating the cursor, Effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to mark some lines on here and then we're going to try to join them together. So we're going to try joining this so that the panel has a nice, smooth, flush edge on it. Now, if there's any discrepancy, we're going to see it come out this way here or we're going to see it come out this way here and we can use that to adjust the cursor. Now, it turns out that the bottom of the base has a line right here that shows you where the middle of the mortise is. Now this is calibrated at the factory. So that line is dead on. If it's not dead on, then there's something wrong with the calibration, but I honestly don't think you're gonna find that to be the case. Uh, typically what happens is that that line is calibrated to the center of the mortise, and then the cursor is left up to you. This one right here. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need, it's a very simple process, but you are gonna need a Torx T10 uh, so if you don't have one of those, pause the recording, jump in your car, go down to the big box store and pick one up. You're not going to want to muscle that with anything but the T10. So since we know that this bottom line is calibrated, what we can do is we can use this line to set the initial placement of the cursor, and then we can kind of fine tune it. Now the fine tuning isn't correcting any error on this line. What it is is correcting you know, our positioning of that cursor initially, but you usually get it pretty close on the get-go. So this is a bit of a trick like what I did on the SCG10 video and that is just to use a little bit of blue tape to initially set up the configuration. So we're going to take some blue tape. I'm going to put some on both sides of this block down the middle. So I'm just going to eyeball it, put it somewhere in the middle because we're going to be cutting it away anyway. All this is for is for transferring a position from the bottom of the domino up to where the cursor is. So I've set the cursor, the thickness here, let me set it to 20 millimeters. This is actually 19, but 20 will be just fine for the thickness. So I'll set it to 20. And now what I can do, tip the fence down. I'm gonna take a marking gauge, a wheel marking gauge. I'm just gonna set it arbitrarily. You can see this is a great piece of wood, but that's fine as long as this is straight and this is square. That's all that matters, and that's the reference surfaces I used in the table saw. I'm just going to put this wheel marking gauge somewhere in on the blue tape and lock it down. Now I'm going to cut it on this side, flip it, use the same reference surface for the wheel, and cut it again on this side. Now we're just going to peel off the tape. If I had nails, that would actually be a little easier. If I had nails, that would be really freaky. There. Now I have two very clear lines on both sides. I mean, if you can see the marking knife line, then that's fine. But this is so much easier and it just takes a little bit of tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it here on the base of the domino. And I'm going to slide it over until this line is exactly where that line is on the base. And then I'm going to clamp it in place. And then we can flip it and we can make sure that the cursor is lined up. And that's going to be our initial setting to give it a try. So let me uh, take a look at that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the T9 to loosen up these two screws so that the cursor itself can move. 
Now, to be honest, I didn't even look to see. Uh, I had calibrated this once before, so it was probably pretty close to dead on. Uh, but yours is likely going to be off. At least the two fences I've had, they've always been off. So give it a try. Scoot it over until that blue line... You're going to want to scoot that over until the blue line from the tape goes exactly down the middle of that center line that you see on the cursor. So let me go ahead and position that. So this should be very close. It may not be perfect, but we can do some slight modifications afterwards and I'll show you how to do that. And for the most part, we're just going to use that block again. So now I'm going to want to join these two blocks together and we can see how close they are when they're done. Just remove the tape on one side and you'll see why in a moment. Although if you're not so short of scrap, you probably don't have to do that. So now the idea here for doing a test pass is that I'm going to line these two up so that they're dead flush on the side and then I'm going to take a square, you know, this bad side here, I'm not going to use that as my reference, I'll use this square side here just to draw a line and then I'm going to make the plunges using the cursor and then after I assemble this, it should remain flush if I've got the thing properly calibrated. So let me just take a square. Usually it's a little easier to slam it up to something here. And so we're hoping that we only have to do this calibration once anyway. And I've done mine on my pin style domino uh, years ago and it's still dead on. So take your time on this to get it right. Uh, then at least after that, you can uh, only blame yourself for where you position the cursor and not so much the tool, although sometimes it's handy if you have the tool. Now, for me, it's obvious which one's the bottom piece. I'm going to go ahead and label these and you'll see why so that we know how to do the adjustment. So this is going to be the topmost piece and this is going to be the bottommost piece. And now let me go ahead and do the mortises. You're going to want it on the exact mortise setting, not the one of the wider ones. Cut this set to, to 20 millimeters, it's 19 millimeters thick. So let's just line it up carefully and do the plunge. I don't know if I could get that any better. I can ever so slightly feel an edge there. My goal is to be able to get these so that they're flush enough that I can simply take a sanding block with 180 on it and be able to finesse that and smooth it out. That's what I care about. You're never going to get this so perfect that there's no touch up if you want it to be completely smooth to the touch. Right now, that is. So that was the extent that we had to do for doing this adjustment. Now the reason why I told you to leave this blue tape on the back is simply for, let's say that you did this calibration and you ended up like this exaggerating up obviously what you need to do is this one that's labeled the top if you need to move the one to the top towards the left in order to get these flush that's the direction that you need to move the cursor and if of course if this was the other way and you need to move it towards the right then that's the direction you need to move the cursor so it's the easiest way to remember which direction you need to move it now whatever this error is is double what the actual error is so if you were to take calipers you know, and do it, use the depth setting on the caliper to figure out what it is in millimeters, then what you could do is take that number, divide it by two, and that's how far you need to move it. Now, you're going to get very, very close. You're going to be at such a small number that a ruler is not really necessary. So what I tend to do is if I needed to do this over again, so what I tend to do if I need to do a small adjustment is I would take this blue, the blue tape line that was on the bottom of the sample piece, and I would again clamp it in place right where I think that line is. And then clamp it. Now loosen up the cursor and adjust it with whatever, whichever direction you need to go by about half of what you think the error is. Now a lot of times because this line here is thicker than of course the knife line that's here, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put the knife line on one side or the other of the cursor line and then scoot it over until the cursor, until the knife line is on the opposite side. So that makes for a very small repeatable measure, then you can just try it again and see how close you get. But I think you're going to find that on the first pass, if you take your time when you're doing this knife line transfer, that you're going to get very, very close. And this one here is pretty much dead on. Uh, I'm not going to do any more adjustments to it or I'll probably mess it up. So there you go. 
go ahead and adjust your uh, domino and you'll find that it's a lot easier to use. Now this is a paddle model. There are some adjustments that you can make to the paddle model for these two paddles in order to get them equidistant to the center. Now there are offset paddles that come with the, the full set and there would be a, a left and a right. And what it is is that this inside edge would be further out by six thou. Uh, the reason for that is that you would swap out whichever paddle you needed to do to get it closer. And the reason it's six thou is if you found that you're only two thou off, you'd probably just lump it. If you were four thou off, then you could put the six thou adjustment in and be off by two thou again. And then of course, if you're six, you're dead on. If you're eight, you're off by two. So the six works out as a really nice number to get you within two thou of the dead center. Now, again, I don't have the paddles to be able to show you, but you can take a look at Rick Christofferson's manual and he explains how to swap out these uh, paddles individually. And it's basically just a set screw on the side and then being a little careful of that spring. Now for the pin model fence, it's a little different. There's a set screw that's on the side. There's one pin here. You can see that there's what looks like a slot there for a slotted screwdriver. So it's the, it's the one when you're facing it, it's the rightmost one. And there's a small set screw on the side in here. If you loosen this set screw up, then you can turn this. And what it is, is it's, you know, it's an eccentric knob. So when you turn it, it's gonna scoot this pin over side to side, whichever way. Now, uh, you're gonna wanna probably mark it to know which direction that you're going and take a look and see. Uh, but you can use this to adjust it so that it's equidistant to the middle. Now, the way that you would do it in this case here is that you would use the two blocks, you know, again, sort of the top and the bottom block, like this. But instead of using a line to mark on, you would place this wood here, slide it over till it hits the pin, and do the mortise. And then when you go to do the bottom one, well now you have to put the fence the other way. So you're using the other pin for registration. Slide it over till it hits the pin, and then do the mortise. And then you can check and see, and it'll be the same type of thing where you figure out where the offset is. It's double the error, is what you're going to see there, and then that's what you can correct.